Hello and welcome. In my previous video, Best Career Path for Software Engineers, I have mentioned that backend development is one of the best career options. In fact, this is a career path I tried to pursue when I first started programming. I know for some people, backend development is scary, but from my experience, it isn't too bad. All you need is a clear strategy of what you need to learn and some effort. I believe anyone can become a backend engineer. In this video, I will share with you a clear roadmap so that you can begin your backend development journey. Also, try to watch the video until the end because the last two technologies are not widely mentioned, but they are extremely important. Without further ado, let's dive in. The first thing you need is a general purpose programming language. You can choose any of the following, Python, Java, JavaScript, C Sharp, PHP, or Ruby on Rails. If you are a complete beginner, I highly suggest you choose Python. The syntax is beginner friendly and super easy to pick up. As a beginner, you don't want to be burned out. So try to keep things simple. Python can help you get a job done. I make another video about how to learn Python fast. So if you are interested, check out the video. One thing I want to mention here is when you are a beginner, pick one language and stick to it. Don't just jump back and forth between languages. You won't master anything. Once you become comfortable with one language, start exploring other languages. The second option that I suggest is Java. Java is one of the most commendable backend languages in tech companies. Most of my real world experience is in Java. However, the language is a bit more complex and it has more restrictions compared to Python. So prepare to take a steeper learning curve. The next step in the roadmap is learning about databases. Database is one of the most important blocks in any backend server. In the digital world, data equals money. Companies love data just like bears love honey. They can use the data to learn about the customers and build better products. And where do they store the honey that they collected? In databases. There are two types of databases, SQL and NoSQL. SQL databases are relational databases. They store everything in tables, rows, and columns, and there can be relationships between tables. Everything is very organized. NoSQL, on the other hand, are non-relational databases. They have different ways to manage data, including key value, graph, document, etc. To learn about databases, you need a database management system. For SQL, you need Progress SQL, MySQL, or SQL Server. And for NoSQL, I think MongoDB is the best option. The third step in your journey is learning how to use a terminal. For a backend developer, there are only two things that you do. Write the code in your IDE and run the code in your terminal. So knowing how to use a terminal is a must for any backend developer. Every operating system have a terminal. But in this video, I'm gonna show you an example on Mac OS. You can open the terminal by pressing command space, then type in terminal, hit enter. Mac OS will open a new terminal for you. Now you can start practicing using some basic commands. I highly suggest you use this tool on a daily basis, even for simple tasks like editing a document or opening a file. When you are used it, it's much faster compared to using a mouse and it just makes you look like a badass. In addition, if you want to do something with the terminal but don't know how, you can always Google it. Tips and tricks to use the terminal efficiently are all over the internet. Use that to your advantage. Number four, REST API. REST API is an interface that allows two systems to exchange information over the internet. Most business applications need to communicate with internal or external applications to perform various tasks. For example, to allow online payments, an e-commerce website has to connect with third-party services like Stripe and PayPal. REST API can support this information exchange because it follows a secure, reliable, and efficient software communication standards. Moreover, most applications have both a web version and a mobile version. But it doesn't make sense to develop two backend engines at the same time. That's why you need REST API. We can create just the web UI and the mobile UI, then make them communicate with the same backend engine. I will make a tutorial about how to develop simple REST API using Flask in the future, so subscribe so that you don't miss it. Number five, 
frameworks. A framework is a structure that you can build software on. It serves as a foundation so that you don't have to start entirely from scratch. Frameworks are often associated with programming languages and are suited to different types of tasks. Let's say you're trying to build your dream house. You could build a foundation and frame the house yourself. You could do it, but it would take you a lot of effort. If all of that were already done for you, it would save you a lot of time, especially if it was done by expert home builders. A framework has a similar purpose in software development. It's designed and tested by other software engineers, so you know it works. However, an application isn't complete with just the framework. It's just a starting point, you still need to add higher functionality to make it better. Each programming language usually has several frameworks to support different types of application. Pick a framework depending on what you want to build. Most of my experience is in web development, so I can only give you some examples for making websites. For example, Python has Django and Flask, Java has Spring Boot, and JavaScript has React. If you are interested in building something else, you can always Google and find the frameworks that you need to learn. According to Exploring Topics, 89% of businesses use a multi-cloud approach. That means they use at least one cloud service for their applications. In the past, to host a website, you need a computer or a server. It took a lot of time to learn and set up, but the storage was very limited. Since the birth of cloud computing, things started to change. Now, almost anyone can create a website and deploy it to the web within minutes. In addition, there's almost no limit on how much data you can store on cloud services. The most popular cloud service in the market is AWS, with 33% of the cloud computing market share. But AWS offers hundreds of services. Which one should you learn? If you are a complete beginner, I highly suggest you learn S3, EC2, IAM, and Lambda. If you want me to make video explaining AWS services in more detail, leave a comment down below. Number 7. Microservices In the past, applications were designed as a huge chunk of information containing the user interface, business logic, and data storage. These applications are called monolithic applications, but they are extremely hard to scale. As the number of features increase, so did the complexity. To solve this problem, applications are broken down into smaller chunks, and each only handles a single task. This is called a microservice architecture. Each piece of the application is called a microservice, and all microservices act independently. Also, microservices can be used together with asynchronous communication to prevent a single point of failure. That means if a microservice fails, it doesn't affect the entire application. Number 8. CI-CD Pipeline CI-CD stands for Continuous Integration and Continuous Deployment. In the past, software's team needed to build the entire application, test it, then deploy it to the web. However, this strategy was extremely inefficient. If there was a bug in the program, it took a lot of time to fix because developer needed to identify the bug in a big application. So, company could only deploy updates once or twice per year. But the consumer didn't care about the development process, they just wanted to see the updates as fast as possible. That's where CI-CD come into play. With CI-CD, you can integrate and deploy new features as soon as they are complete. It's a fail fast and learn model. This way, you can quickly isolate your bug and fix it before it ruins the entire application. The users can also experience the most up-to-date application all the time. The best tool for CI-CD is Jenkins. I've used it a couple of times in the past during my time at Redfin. It was pretty easy to use. To learn Jenkins, I highly suggest you watch the video Learn Jenkins Complete Jenkins Course Zero to Hero by DevOps Journey. The course covers all the basic information you need to know about the tool. I've left a link in the description, so feel free to check it out. However, I don't recommend you learn Jenkins until you master all the previous steps. You only use this tool in a real-world project. If you want to be a personal project for your resume, you probably don't need to know Jenkins. Let's summarize our roadmap. First, start by picking a programming language. Then, learn how to use databases. Next, master the terminal. After that, 
build your knowledge in REST APIs and frameworks, play around with cloud services, and finally, explore microservices and CI/CD pipeline. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoy it. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. That support the channel a lot, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.